Hello, my name is Mike Driscoll, and today I thought it'd be fun to talk about what's new in Python 3.11. As you might know, Python 3.11 isn't quite out yet, but you can download beta versions of it right now and try it out. It'll be officially released this fall, in fall 2022. So let's just talk about some of the cool new additions that are coming in Python 3.11. Um, let's talk a little bit about an overview of some of the improvements. Um, Python 3.11 has better performance, improved error messages, um, exception groups are being added, uh, some new type hints, and it has a couple of new libraries. Uh, probably the most significant is the Tomolib module. So let's just talk about some of these things. All right, so faster Python. This is awesome. Python 3.11 will be up to 10 to 60% faster than Python 3.10. On average, uh, the core developers measured a 1.25 times speed up on the standard benchmark suite. Um, if you go on in here, we can see a little bit about this, and they just talk about faster startup, uh, faster runtime using cheaper, lazy Python frames. I don't understand a lot of these speed up improvements, um, but it sounds really amazing what, what happens um, with how fa much faster Python is. And um, Anthony Shaw, who's the author of CPython Internals, talked about playing with Python 3.11, and he saw a 45% increase in creating instances of basic classes and calling methods, mostly with Python code, which he posted on Twitter. And he's posted some other tweets about the speedups in uh, Python 3.11. So he's got some benchmarking here that he's got on there as well. And you could take a look at that and just kind of see how much faster 3.11 is, uh, even the alpha version of it, versus 3.10. So, you know, it looks promising, and I'm pretty excited about that. All right. The next neat feature in 3.11 is error locations and tracebacks. So this is kind of the error improvement in Python 3.11. What that means is that it's going to point out where the error is in the traceback, and it's going to use these little caret uh, marks to kind of show you, hey, you have an error right here in your code. Um, these examples are taken directly from the What's New in Python 3.11 um, examples uh, on that web page. Um, <clears throat> if you have a nested traceback, it's going to show you even more um, detail. And you can kind of see as it goes down, it just kind of shows you exactly where in the traceback the problem, the problem lies. And what's really helpful is like if you have a complicated um, calculation, it'll show you which part of the calculation is causing the issue. So in this case, I believe this is saying that z is 0, not y. So here's where the problem is. Somehow z became 0, and we're dividing by that, which, of course, is a no-no. All right. Another new exciting feature in Python 3.11 is exception groups, which is part of PEP 654. Um, exception groups basically let you put together a group of exceptions. Um, so you can create... Uh, multiple exceptions. Let's go back one, and we'll just go to the PEP, so we can actually look at some of these examples, because they don't fit quite on my screen. So here we go. We have exception group one, and you have nested exception groups, so here's another exception group inside of this one, and then you have a third one, and you'll note that they're all named exception groups. And then, of course, you can use Python's traceback module to print out the exception, and you'll see that Python uh, is smart enough to tell you, or uh, smart enough to print it out in such a way that it's easy to read and see, you know, how the nested exceptions end up going. So, um, let's see if we can find a better example on here. One of, the one of the parts that I liked about it is that it has accept star, which is kind of a new, a new syntax. Let's see if I can find the example on here. But basically it means that you're accepting an, um, multiple... Um, exception groups. It simplifies working with exception groups. The star symbol indicates multiple exceptions can be handled by each accept star clause. So you might have accept, accept a clause, accept star, uh, spam error, or you might have it say it can accept more, multiple errors. Um, anyway, I just like kind of like the syntax. I think it kind of cleans it up. Um, it lets you kind of name the exceptions that you're taking in, and it kind of lets you just capture them. You can see here that um, because we're using accept star, it's going to stop here and this will catch it. Even though it just says OS error, 
because it's a set star, it's going to catch the blocking I/O error. And this that because of that, we're not even going to get down to this other um, exception block. Anyway, this looks like an interesting thing. I don't know how much I would use it, but uh, I think it's a neat, neat, neat little new feature in 3.11. All right, let's go on to the new type hints. So, mark, uh, PEP 655, um, marking individual typed dict items as required or not required. This is actually kind of cool, in my opinion. So, you create yourself a type dict, which is kind of a subclass. And inside of that, just like you do with a named tuple, uh, in type hints, you can say um, you want to create a string or an int or whatever, but now you can add required or not required. So here we have um, title, which is uh, doesn't say anything about it, so it's required. This one is not required. So since we didn't mark, um, if you actually run this code, you try to try to create an instance of M3. You can see here that it's not going to work right. It's going to create an error because we didn't specify a title in our typed dict. Pretty neat. All right, another neat uh, new feature in the type hints uh, for Python 3.11 is PEP 6.7.3, the self type. The new self annotation provides a simple and intuitive way to annotate methods that return an instance of their class. For example, if you have to return um, the self type, which is pretty common if you're creating yeah, your own context manager, which is what we're doing here in this example. Um, you can just say uh, return self, and it's just going to know what to do, which I think is really handy. Before you'd have to like return kind of like the class name, like my lock, or callable, or something like that. And now you can just return self. Um, another cool um, new type is uh, the arbitrary uh, literal string type, or little string, which is covered in PEP 675. This new annotation may be used to indicate that a function parameter can be of any literal string type. This allows a function to accept arbitrary string types as well as strings created from other literal, literal strings. So, um, again, I'm having some, some issues with my cells. But anyway, what you can see here from this example, which is also taken from the 3.11 um, What's New page, is that you can say query string is a literal string, and so is the table name, whereas the arbitrary string is just a normal string. So this is just kind of lets you say um, that uh, it's just a different way of saying that it's a function parameter that can be any literal string type. It just, it just gives you a little bit more granularity in what you want to say um, about your, your type hinting. All right, finally, we want to talk about the Toml web. So um, that was added in 3.11, and here you can see you just import tomlib. You can start uh, loading uh, a toml file. So where you know with open, open it up, use tomlib to load it, and that will just extract the data, much like the JSON module does today with JSON files. And you can do the same thing with a toml string. You can just use load s, also like the JSON. You know, if, you, if you ever use JSON, you can just do JSON dot load s and json dot load for loading a string or loading a file. And I believe if we go back, I'm not sure this is documented very well. But if you go in here, yeah, we've got we got load and load s. It doesn't appear to have the dump and dump s um, me methods yet, but I'm hoping to go ahead and add that so that we can also create um, the toml files as well. Uh, I guess we'll wait and see if that actually gets added to 3.11. Anyway, um, I wanted to thank you so much for watching, and be sure to go ahead and check out all the cool things that are coming in Python 3.11. I think it's kind of exciting, and I hope you do too.